This video is part one of a review and update on macular degeneration, covering how the aging retina develops macular degeneration and how it is treated. Consider this video as a review of the basics. How the aging retina develops macular degeneration, what the terms dry kind and wet kind mean, and how each kind is treated. In part two, we will look forward covering several new studies published this year, for example the results of AREDS2 and new work on genes and macular degeneration. Let us start with a look at the eye and the aging retina. The retina is a layer of nerve tissue that lines the inside of the eye. It acts like film in a camera receiving light and creating an image. Here is the view we get looking directly into the eye. This is a nice shiny retina of a young person. Here is the optic nerve and blood vessels. The macula is the center part of the retina responsible for your central vision. The fovea is the very center, the part you use to see fine detail, that is to read, to recognize faces, and so on. Over time, the retina, just like the rest of the body, undergoes wear and tear changes. This photo shows a retina in middle age. Notice the nice shiny surface is gone. Damage is done partly by oxidation and partly by inflammation. That causes it to function less well and vision consequently decreases. The first visible sign of macular degeneration is accumulation of these white spots called drusen which are clumps of waste products building up under the retina. At this, at this stage, the drusen are small and there aren't very many of them. It is unlikely that vision is affected. Here is what is going on behind the scenes. This diagram of the outer layers of the retina shows the rods and cones. Beneath them is a layer of pigment cells labeled RPE, which support the metabolism of the rods and cones. Among the several processes that go along with aging of the retina, first, is deposit of waste products inside the RPE cells, the extra brown spots in the illustration. Second is the presence of drusen, waste material under the pigment cells. And there are other changes also happening under the retina. As macular degeneration progresses, waste products continue to accumulate. You can see a few more drusen, then more drusen, larger and more densely packed. Eventually, the pigment cells start to die. That is what is happening in the pale patches indicated by the arrows. As the pigment cells die, the retinal cells lose their metabolic support and they start to die as well. That is called the atrophic stage and vision is significantly reduced. This is the typical way macular degeneration progresses with slow, gradual vision loss. Interestingly, this is confined to just the macula, the center part of vision. Peripheral vision remains unaffected. This is the typical course of macular degeneration, progressing gradually over time called the dry type. The other kind is the wet kind. In general, people start off with the dry kind, but somewhere along the way a small percentage develop leakage of fluid under the retina. That means they have converted to the wet kind. To continue from the previous illustration, now we are showing new blood vessels growing in under the retina. The new vessels leak fluid under the retina. At first it is the clear serum part of blood, but usually within a few days or weeks the larger red blood cells also escape. In this photo, the arrow is pointing to a small accumulation of blood right in the center of the fovea. The small hemorrhage can turn into a larger hemorrhage and more scar tissue accumulates. When caught early, this can be treated to stop the leakage. Once scar formation is significant, then treatment is much less successful. I want to make a couple of points before we move on to treatment. In the studies we will be talking about, the end point is progress to the advanced stage of macular degeneration. For the dry type, the end stage is when the pigment cells are lost, and so are the associated retinal cells, and so central vision is significantly reduced. 
The occurrence of wet macular degeneration is the other end point that counts as advanced. In terms of treatment, the laser was the first useful tool for treating macular degeneration. This applied to the wet kind. The presence of a hemorrhage indicated by the arrow is an ominous development. Without treatment, it is likely most of central vision in this eye will soon be lost. On an angiogram, the site of the leaking vessels can be identified, shown here by the white ring. Then, spots of laser energy can be used to cauterize the leaking vessels within that ring. You can, however, see the limitation of this treatment. The laser destroys that area of the retina. So the idea was, you sacrificed a small amount of retina to save a larger area. If the area that was lasered was in the center of vision, that was a difficult situation because it knocked out central vision. The next big advance in treating the wet kind was the use of medication to get the leakage to go away, avoiding the retinal damage caused by the laser. The concept relates to a substance produced by the retina called VEGF, which stands for Vascular Endothelial Growth Factor which is the cause of the new vessel growth and subsequent leakage. Here is how that works. Some kinds of damage to the retina result in hypoxia, that is, lack of oxygen. In response, the retina sends out a help messenger, a growth factor, VEGF, which stimulates the growth of new blood vessels. While that may sound useful, the new vessels are actually fragile and leaky. The treatment strategy is to block the growth factor. When that is blocked, the new vessels go away and the leakage goes away. Does that work? This graph shows the results from a landmark study using a VEGF inhibitor named ranibizumab, also known as Lucentis. This is the MARINA trial. The scale on the left side shows the amount of vision change measured by the number of letters gained or lost. The dashed line through the middle is a reference line showing no vision change. The scale along the bottom shows time in months. The downward sloping blue line shows that with no treatment, vision decreases steadily over time. The orange and red lines show that with treatment, vision not only does not decline, but actually it could improve. I remember when this was first presented at a retina meeting how excited the presenters were that they had a tool that gave them such an improved outcome compared to what they had before. There is now more than one VEGF blocker available. Avastin is similar to Lucentis but less expensive. In order to reach their target they need to be injected into the eye and that may need to be done multiple times. The new addition is ILEA which has a somewhat longer duration of effect meaning injections may need to be done less often. So far we have two methods of treating the wet kind of macular degeneration, laser and VEGF blockage. The next question is can anything be done about the dry kind and for prevention? Since oxidation was part of the mechanism of damage, could it be that supplementing with antioxidant vitamins might slow the progress of macular degeneration? The age-related eye disease study was designed to answer just that question. The AREDS study followed 5,000 people for 10 years. Half were given a supplement of antioxidant vitamins A, C, E, and the mineral zinc. The other half got a placebo. This graph shows the results. On the left scale is the probability of significant vision loss. Along the bottom scale is time in years. The green line shows treatment with placebo. That is what happens with no special treatment. The black and blue lines were the results of treatment with either antioxidant vitamins or the mineral zinc. You can see that each one has lowered the risk of vision loss somewhat. The bottom red line shows the result of using vitamins plus zinc together. It further decreased the probability of vision loss. As you can see, the supplement combination did not reverse or even stop progression, but it did slow it down. One extra note here. 
In this study, as well as a couple of others, it was found that people who smoke, when they take vitamin A, have an increased risk of developing lung cancer. So people who were smokers or recently quit did not get vitamin A as part of their regimen. Because of the success of AREDS, AREDS 2 was organized to answer several additional questions. The primary part of the study involved adding certain nutrients to the original AREDS formula because there was evidence that they might further slow progress of AMD. First, lutein and zeaxanthine are carotenoid pigments related to vitamin A that are known to be important in retinal function. Second, other studies suggested that adding omega-3 fatty acids, DHA and EPA, could also be helpful. Third, they added everything together, the entire recipe. The control group for this study used the basic original AREDS formula. We have been waiting for those results which were published this May 2013. We will present those results in part two of this video set. We will revisit genes associated with macular degeneration. Just how much risk do different genes actually make? Lastly, we will look at a larger range of risk factors like age, smoking behavior, and overweight. All that will be covered in part two. Here are selected references if you want to read further.